Hey y'all and welcome back to our devotion. Um, today we're picking up reading from this little devotional, Farm Raised Devotionals by Ida Mae Couch. And I was told the other day, which I knew, but in case you don't know, you can find this on Amazon. I found it at a thrift store, but they do sell it on Amazon. So if you want to get you a copy, I'm loving it. And I also found out that Miss Ida Mae Couch has now passed away. Someone, one of y'all was telling me that and telling me a little bit about her story and her life. And thank y'all for that. But I hate to know that she passed away. I would have loved to have met her. I don't know if that would have ever happened, but I just feel such a connection to her. This book has really blessed me. And I know it's not her. It was the Lord using her and has used this devotional. And it has just thoroughly blessed me. And I'm so thankful for that. So today's title is Being Told No. So let's just see. I've got my Bible here, my King James. So let's just see how God's going to minister to us. Being Told No. I've told you about my mom's routine, organized life. Part of the routine was Wednesday grocery shopping. She and I would head to town and go to Piggly Wiggly to get groceries for the week. Y'all, that used to be the only store we had. There was no Walmart or uh, Winn Dixie or anything where we lived. It was the Piggly Wiggly. <laughs> As I grew a little older, I was given some freedom to go through the store on my own. I wandered one day into an area where paper and pencils were shelved. This became my favorite place to go because they sometimes had paper doll books in this area. They didn't always have these, so it was a real find if they were there. I loved paper dolls. Still do. As well as being a woman of routine, my mother was also a serious money manager. For one thing, we didn't have much of it, and what we did have needed to be used in a practical purpose. On one particular visit, I remember finding a new stack of paper doll books. Oh, the thrill! I looked at each and every book. I picked up the one I liked the best and went to find my mom to ask her if we could get it. I hoped against hope that she would say yes. As with most kids, I like to get things and being told no was unpleasant and disappointing. I never knew what my mom's answer would be because sometimes it was yes, but more often it was no. But because the answer was sometimes yes, I had hope. That's kind of how it is when we ask God for things. I hope in there, I, the hope in there just waiting for an answer. We hope it will be the answer we want. One thing I've come to understand is that God is holy through and through. There is no evil or wrong in him. And this reference is 1 John 1 and 5. And I'm going to read that scripture. 1 John 1 and 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Whatever he allows is good, no matter how awful it may, may appear to my human eyes. He is always right. I may not like his answer, but part of being his child is trusting that he is in control and he knows best. May your will align with God's will. That's what's important. Oh boy. Does this one really hit home for me today? Okay. I'm going to share with y'all what's going on. So, I think I've talked about it on this one. I think I've testified about it. My car. My car. My car is turned into a money pit. And, you know, we just not too long ago spent like $1,300 on it. And I even come on here and testified how, you know, I prayed about it for so long and how God just, you know, allowed us to take it to the shop. They fixed everything. We had the money, you know, and it was just God answered that prayer and this and that. And I kid you not, literally like three weeks after that, it started messing up again. And I was just like, Lord, you're not going to let my testimony be for nothing. You know, I there's no way I can go back and testify that, you know, God did it, God did it, and then go back and say, oh, you know, I have issues. Well, it's 
gone back to doing everything it was doing before. The lights come on half the time that they supposedly fix. Um, it's still using oil. They supposedly fix that. I mean, there's just so many issues with it. And now, none of the windows roll down. All the things in the doors that control the windows, not the motors, but the little plastic things, all of them have to be replaced. And that's like $1,000 just for that. Forget the mechanical issues of the car just doing exactly what it was doing before. So, you know, I was very discouraged. Um, just could not believe that my testimony was going to be in vain, you know, that I was just going to be made a fool. And I was talking to my mom about it one day. And she said, Donna, she said, did you ever ask God if it was his will for y'all to get it fixed or you to buy a new car? I said, no, I didn't. You know, I prayed about it, but I just assumed it was Donna wanted to fix the car because Donna didn't want a car note, you know. So I really, if I'm being completely honest, I, when she asked me that, I really realized I didn't really seek God's will. Well, fast forward to where we're at now. So James and I have made a decision that we are going to try to find another car. And so we've been looking, we've, you know, we've got our figure in mind, what we're looking for. Um, and we've actually went a couple weekends and the first car, I was so excited about going to drive it. You know, I was like, oh my goodness, this is gonna be it. This is gonna be it. But then I had prayed all the day before the morning of, I was like, Lord, I want your will. I don't want Donna's will. I want your will, God. And if this is your will, then it will work out. But Lord, I know me. And I know that I'm excited and I, I want this. So if it's not your will, I'm going to need you to just help me not to be devastated. Help me not to be hurt. Help me to just have peace and accept that this was not your will that you're, as much as I may want it, and as great as it may be, and if you say no, then that means you just have something better for me. And I remember this house that I'm living in, that we're living in, the whole situation with that and how he worked that out. So we went and as soon as we seen the car, it had, both of the doors on the driver's side were messed up. And I was like, nope. But we drove it just to kind of get an idea about it. And as we were test driving it, I just told James, I said, this is not it. And we took it back and thanked the guy. Um, and they had another vehicle. It was not on that lot. They was going to bring it in today. And uh, we were going to go test drive it. And I remember leaving there last week and I just had complete peace. And I was just like, thank you, God, because it just meant he heard me, and not only did he hear me, he answered my prayer. And he gave me complete peace. He gave James peace about it, because he and I both had discussed it, and I prayed over both of us that we would know if it was a yes or a no, and we would have peace. And he did that. So I get up this morning to get ready, because we're going to go look at the other car. The guy calls us, and he says, the car sold. It's like, okay, okay, I still have peace because that means it was not God's will. So we take a ride around here and we go look at a different car a lot. And the car we looked at, I was just like, it's not the one and I have peace. The spirit me has peace. The flesh, the flesh in me is kind of wanting it to happen, you know, right now, but God is saying no right now for a reason. And I've learned from experience, from things in my past, when he says no, it is not to be cruel or unkind and not to, you know, give us what we want and what we need and what we ask for. He has his reasons. So the way I trusted him about a house and how he worked it all out, I'm going to trust him about the car. I'm going to continue to pray about it and seek his will because I want to know that I am in the will of God about it and I know when the time comes and it's my time he's going to put the right one in our path at the right time for the right price it's going to have everything I wanted and if I know God it's going to have some bonuses 
because he's just that good. And I'm having to learn to accept the no's and just know that when the yes comes, it's gonna be better than I could ever imagine. You know, I could also tell you about my daughter and her job. Ever since she got out of nursing school, she has not had the best experience working as a nurse. In fact, her nursing jobs that she's had, she has literally hated every one of them. Um, they have not been what she wanted. They have been anything but. I mean, she has cried. I've cried with her because you don't want your children to be upset. You want them to be happy. So for ever since then, however how long she's been a nurse, I don't even remember now, I've been praying for her and for God to put her in a custom made job for her. She's got this experience. She's got this education. She's a great nurse. Her patients love her. And I knew God could just custom make her a job that would be everything that she wanted and then some. And during all my prayer and things, she's, she went to other jobs and they were horrible. And I was like, I understand, but God's working on it. I'm praying. We're praying for you a custom made job. She interviewed for this job she's at now over a month ago and we prayed and prayed and prayed and she got the job on the spot and when she called me with that news I just knew I just knew it was God's will and y'all she loves it she looks forward to going to work she loves the people she's with she's like I haven't been here very long but I already feel like I fit in I already feel like I'm part of this family She's picked up the job just as quick, and it was completely out of anything that she had experience with, and they were okay with that. It just goes to show you, when God says yes, everything is perfect. And I'm saying this to myself, because the flesh, me, is wanting this car situation to hurry up. I'm wanting it to hurry up. I'm wanting to be able to get into a car and not have to worry, you know, about it. I'm wanting to be able to get into a car and I can roll it to a drive through and roll down the window. You know, there's so many. I'm wanting to get in a car where I don't have to worry about it. Do I need to add oil? You know, is this going to be the day that it's just going to decide not to crank? Is it, am I going to get stranded? Whatever. That's what I want. And it's coming. It's coming. God's working it all out. I don't know how. I don't know when. But I put it all in His hands and I trust Him completely. And so... I would definitely be sharing that testimony because through everything that we go through, we learn. And this whole car experience is going to be another part of my testimony. What I thought was the will of God, Him making a way, I can't say 100% it wasn't. Maybe it was a temporary fix that He put in place for me to get me through a little bit longer till He gets me to my final you know, one he has for me. I don't know. All I know is I trust him. And when he says no, I don't want it. But when he says yes, give it to me, Lord. I want all the good things that you have for me. So if you're like me and you're going through some things that you just, I just don't quite understand everything, that does not mean I don't trust him. That does not mean that I don't have faith in him. That means I'm going to trust and lean into him more because I don't know what the future holds. But I'm sitting here waiting for that. Yes, Lord. <laughs> right. <laughs> wow. I hope this blesses you. I hope it makes sense. That's my biggest thing I always worry about is if I'm making sense. But I just pray that the Lord cleans it up. And when it gets through to y'all, it, it makes sense. And he makes it work and helps it to minister to you. I love each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for being here. I pray you have a blessed and wonderful week. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, y'all.